Good morning. On this bright morning, we welcome you to worship with Grace United Church, an inclusive intergenerational community partner in Sarnia Lambton. We strive to provide a sanctuary space and time that brings reverence and respect to any, every, and all peoples that seek spiritual connection grounded in unconditional love. My name is Kenji Marui. I use he, him as pronouns, and along with Pat Morrison, form the pastoral team for this congregation that affirms, welcomes, celebrates, advocates, and uplifts our 2S LGBTQIA plus members, adherents, family, friends, and neighbors. We believe and live into the call of Christ to support and serve any and all in his name. number of things. We're a busy church. We have a lot on the go. First thing I want to say is thank you. Thank you to everyone that was involved with our fall fair yesterday, to the legion of organizers and planners and helpers and assistants and aides and volunteers and visitors and patrons and everyone who spread the word for the marvel that was Grace Fall Fair yesterday. I was given a rough uh, estimate of maybe $5,000 that we made uh, yesterday. Thank you. No, thank that, that That's all you. Um, thanks to Yvonne and Bev, who kind of headed up, uh, organized uh, everyone to do all the things. Uh, there are some bills still outstanding that need to be paid, but there are some leftovers and extras that are available for sale afterwards. Uh, so we're, we're thinking that's the number, but uh, we'll be able to give a better, uh, more accurate accounting uh, later on. Um, our church newsletter has been reformatted as a Google document. It has most of our announcements there, and uh, that is found online. Um, you, we do have some printed hard copies for anyone that might be interested in uh, seeing those announcements, and they are on the uh, rectangular table in the narthex in the lobby space uh, that is behind you. Uh, I'll, invite, I'll invite Tori to uh, give a quick minute about uh, some things happening after our service right now. Morning, everyone. I uh, just wanted to do a quick note that after the service, in celebration of our new members, baptism, as well as our volunteers, we're going to be doing cake in room one, which is just that space beside the lobby there. Uh, so all are welcome, and it should be great. Hoping to see everyone there. Also an invitation to join, uh, join us in the chapel for a brief ritual that has been uh, developed and is led by our youth that extends the work of worship and fosters further connections among us all. So you can maybe pop in there before the cake. I'll promise not to eat it all on you. Um, one further announcement that I want to highlight is uh, the reformation of the Amazing Grace team for Women's Interval Homes Walk a Mile event on November the 2nd. Uh, open to all genders, I invite you to join me on a team by registering online and then pestering your family, friends, and all your connections to sponsor the team. Um, speaking of which, I do have a little uh, uh, envelope and a sign-up list on a clipboard on the round table in the narthex by the South Sanctuary doors if uh, you could try and uh, uh, contribute to our effort. Now, I have, uh, Friday afternoon, I, I sent out a challenge to as many of the faith communities that I have contact information for in Sarnia Lambton to try and beat us. And with the permission of the worship committee, I have offered my worship leadership services to the faith community that raises the most money. So I need you to show up to keep me here. Um, thank you. The uh, Amgenong St. Clair community south of us, uh, the Weequadong, Kettle Point, and Azudena, Stony Point communities to the north, and the Haudenosaunee Six Nations to the east, uh, surround us and, and, and frame and shape the context and place of where we are living. We dwell among many peoples and many civilizations that historically and presently share the lands and waters that support our own living. Reminded of our connectedness and committed to the health and well-being of the whole, 
We seek to understand more of what it might mean to live in right relations across differences of culture and spirituality. As God dwelt among and moved with the people, so may goodwill and openness to reconciliation reside in us. Now, as Mark brings us into worship with the prelude, let us bring our full selves to this day, to this moment. Let us open our hearts, our spirits, our minds to understanding what finding a spiritual home might be, how we might care for ourselves and for one another, how we might extend and expand that sense of love and welcome that Christ brings into our own space. As we uh, enter into worship, let us bring ourselves to here. Thank you, Mark. And I'll invite uh, you to join with me in our call to worship as you see it appearing on the screen before you. <clears throat> Come from the west and the east, gather from the south and the north. We come, young ones and older, in all of the diversity with which God has created us. Come, learners and teachers, healers and leaders, join together musicians and choir. We come to lift hearts and voices in praise and prayer. We gather as God's beloved people. Let us worship God in song and in prayer. Let us trust and risk as we seek to be faithful. Let us sing, pray, and praise together today.
us pray. O God, with us, the one who takes us from the tent to the throne, the one who prepares places for us and promises rest from our enemies, we open our hearts and souls to the beauty of your kingdom. We seek to hear the precious news once again that we might continually be renewed and transformed and awed by your abundant love, everlasting peace, miraculous hope, and quenchless joy. Beloved, holy lover, we welcome you to our house, the sacred space we have built to gather together as your people. Here we come to offer you our thanksgiving and praise in response to the abundance of your creation. May our praise and prayers be pleasing to you. Bless what we offer of ourselves in time and talent and treasure. And may our lives reflect the beauty that you have birthed in us. Amen. It's a great looking group of people here on a bright fall morning. Welcome to worship. Welcome to this space. Welcome to this community that is unique uh, to this moment now. Because we're different than the gathering that was last week. We're different from the gathering that's going to be next week. And that's because the, of you being here. We're grateful that you have brought the fullness of your care and your commitment to one another here, your curiosity, uh, your support, your love, your faith, your wondering. And through all of that, we, we hold on to the promise and love and care uh, that Jesus Christ gives to us. And we wish one another, we give to one another this sense of uh, abiding and uh, expansive and eternal peace. And so in this moment of uh, sharing this, this piece with one another, I'll give you some time to turn to the people near you and in, introduce yourself if you have to and catch up on your news if you want and wish one another the peace of Christ. And so uh, thank you for being this community here and now. May the peace of Christ be with you. We all set? Peace be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give God thanks and praise. Okay, I'm super jacked this morning because something really cute is about to happen. The house is full of cute babies. Yes, aren't babies cute? Even I was cute when I was a baby. I know that's hard to believe. Who said that? Thank you. This woman speaks the truth. Um, in a few minutes, um, some cute babies are going to be baptized. We have Theodore and Zenny and Mackenzie going to be baptized. But before that, we have some cute big babies who are going to become members of the church. Now, despite all of the cuteness that's going to unfold, including this very moment, um, there's something I don't want you to miss out on. Even though there's all sorts of cute that plays out, there's something more that's happening here. So like when the cute babies are brought up here with their parents, the parents are, in so many words, saying this. We love this child so much. And we love God. We want this child to grow up to know God. And so we want this child to be raised among these people who spend their lives serving God so that my little baby might also grow up to know God and serve God. That's what's about to happen. And when the big babies stand up here to become members, they're saying, hey, we've been baptized, but we want to remember our baptism where somebody promised that they would raise us in a faith community so that we might know God. And we were confirmed. We stood up here as adults and said, we're following God with our lives. But now today they're saying, we want to remind you and remind ourselves what this is all about. We want to become a member of this congregation so that we can serve God alongside you. So let's let the cuteness unfold and let's keep an eye for promises that are made to each other. 
Okay. At various points on the journey of our life in Christ, we have an opportunity to renew and uh, reaffirm the faith that is proclaimed in baptism. As those who have been baptized already, together with those today who will be baptized, profess for themselves the faith of the Christian community in which they have been nurtured, we gather as a people here in a community to reaffirm the power of the Holy Spirit and to celebrate the place of Nicole, Kevin, Marilyn, Mackenzie, and Zenny and Theodore in the people of God and Grace United Church. We give thanks for their gifts as witnessed in this community of faith and promise to continue to walk with them. With joy and thanksgiving, we celebrate the faith that we all share and rededicate ourselves to the life and work and the body of Christ. Representing you, the congregation, is Bev Walkling, uh, chair of our Congregational Care and Growth Committee, and she will present the candidates and as your names uh, are called up. I'll invite you and your party to come join me up here in this chancel space around the baptismal font. Uh, on behalf of the Congregation of Grace United Church, I present the following persons for initiation into the body of Christ through baptism. Mackenzie Graham Welsh Patterson and Zenny Arlen Patterson, sons of Kinnett and Nicole. Theodore George Laird, son of Devon and Aphrodita. Hopefully I've said that properly, and if not, I apologize. Aphrodita. I also present Nicole Patterson, whom we welcome into the membership of this community of faith through their profession of faith, and Kevin and Marilyn Graham, who join us by transferring their membership from another congregation, St. Paul's United Church. So joining the church is about making promises, about making vows. Uh, some of the, uh, the little ones are not able to speak for themselves or to fully understand the promises that they're making. So their parents will make those promises on their behalf. Uh, some of the older ones up here, they know what's going on and uh, will be able to uh, speak for, for themselves these, uh, to these questions and vows we are asking them to make. Prom a profession of faith and promises in the many things that we believe in our faith. Do you believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh, to reconcile and make new and who works in us and others by the Spirit? I Will you follow in the way of Jesus Christ, resisting oppression and evil, seeking justice and witnessing to God's love for all creation? Will you proclaim Jesus crucified and risen in your words and actions? Will you join with your siblings, sisters, and brothers in this community of faith to celebrate God's presence, live with respect, respect in creation, and love and serve others? Now, this next question is specifically to you, the parents of... Uh, of the children being baptized. In baptism, Mackenzie, Zenny, and Theodore mark an important step in their journey of faith. Will you care for them and help them to take their place within the mission and witness of Christ's church? Now, in, uh, in the United Church's understanding of things, we, we don't have to have godparents because we understand that the role of supporting family and supporting the parents and, and helping in that, in that God-parent role is the work of all of us, the community, the congregation. That doesn't mean that we can't also uh, identify special people uh, in our kids' lives that would, uh, would step into that role uh, willingly. And so, so for those of you named as God-parents, this question is for you. Recognizing that many persons nurture and influence the life of a child, will you support these children and their parents as they grow in faith? Thank you. Everyone got the answers right? Congregation, I have a question for you, so I'd ask you to please stand.
As Grace United Church, do you commit yourselves to support and nurture these persons within a community which worships God, loves and serves others, seeks justice, and resists evil? We do, by the grace of God. Let us pledge to these persons our continued support and care. As a baptized and baptizing people, we commit ourselves to support and uphold you within the community of faith. We will continue to support you, walk with you, and grow with you. With God's help, we will live out our baptism as a loving community in Jesus Christ, nurturing one another in faith, upholding one another in prayer, encouraging one another in God's work. So if uh, you have been to a, a baptismal a baptism service uh, here at Grace with me before, you might know that uh, this is our baptismal font. Uh, contained within, however, um, are, are some river stones, some, some rocks that are, are, are in the font. And uh, it's, it's symbolic because the moment where the water joins the rock, rocks, echoes or mirrors what happens in creation, in nature. Anytime you find water in creation, whether it's a lake or an ocean or a puddle, you're always going to find rocks also there, whether it's ocean bedrock or like fine sand or pebbles or river stones. Uh, it's, it's, it's for me a, a reminder that no matter where we go in life, wherever we might end up, um, there's God's love is there as a foundation, as a basis, as a steadying uh, presence. And so we can't get away from that. Um, so so this, this bringing together of water and rocks symbolizes that. But uh, also these, these stones serve as a keepsake or a memento. So for anyone who would want to, uh, after the service, come and, and take one of these, um, there, there's plenty here. Uh, just have it as a touchstone of this moment, this gathering of community. Uh, keep it somewhere safe or discover it in your purse or in your pocket a week from now and uh, wonder how a stone got there. And then remember, remember that you were here and remember that this church baptized these children, welcomed these people into membership and think back to now and give a little prayer for, for, for all of us. And uh, God's work continues in and through all of that. May God be with you. And also you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them up to the Lord. Let us give God thanks and praise. It is good. It is good. God, God thanks and praise. Gracious and holy God, we bless you for the gift of life and within it, the gift of water. Over its unshaped promise, your spirit hovered at creation and by water comes the growth of the earth. And through water, you led your children of Israel to freedom and into the waters of the Jordan, your child Jesus was baptized. Now may your spirit be upon us and what we do that this water may be a sign for all of new life in Christ, in whose name we pray. Listen to its free-flowing, releasing, life-giving powers. This water that nourishes and sustains becomes a symbol of eternal life, care, and love, of God's presence within and around Nicole, having professed your faith through the questions asked and the promises that we, you made earlier, you have refer, reaffirmed and confirmed your earlier baptismal vows. Remember your baptism and be thankful. Nicole, the power of the Holy Spirit work within you, that being born of water and the Spirit, you may continue to be a faithful witness of Jesus Christ. By the gift of your Spirit, O God, strengthen her, that she may be true to you all her life. Amen. All right. Let me get you that. All right.
Kevin, Marilyn, having already been baptized and confirmed, we are delighted to welcome you to Grace United Church, giving thanks for the spiritual nurture, care, and support that you have received from your previous congregation. We hold St. Paul's United Church in our care and in our thoughts. We are grateful to them, and we are grateful for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we welcome you to the privileges and responsibilities of membership in this congregation. We give thanks to God for your witness among us. By water and the Spirit, we are called, claimed, and commissioned. We are called God's own. Welcomed as children of God, we are claimed by Christ, united with Christ, united with one another and the Christian community of every time and place. We are commissioned to Christ's ministry of love, peace, and justice, and strengthened by the Holy Spirit for the work of the church in the world. All right. I can see. Hello. Okay. That's all right. We'll see how you do with the bath. And what is the name of your child? Mackenzie Graham Welsh. Mackenzie Graham Welsh Patterson. I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I mark you with the sign of the cross that you are here and now claimed forever by Christ. This is an extension of your family. All these people here in this church. I'm going to introduce him to, uh, to the people here. You can, this is Mackenzie. This is the choir. <laughs> yes, you'll hear them. Yes, and these are these are your people, and this is your church. <laughs> and you get to see, so curious, and everyone here has a story to tell and a lesson to share, but what God means to them, what faith means, and what it means to belong to a place where you can come and be known and just be accepted and not have to prove anything, that you're, you're just here as you and that you are loved. And we will work to help you learn and grow. And we'll help your parents to do this. You're getting the full tour. Yes, welcome to Grace. Oh, and oh, here's some other kids too. Yeah, they're just a little bit older than you. But soon you'll be running around with them too. Okay, let's, let's call, come on in and we'll put our hands, lay our hands on and I'll pray a blessing. Send, O oh God, your Holy Spirit to rest upon Mackenzie, that he would know of your love and care and peace throughout his life. May he be strengthened through you and by you. May he know the love that is eternal and unending. Amen. Okay. Let's go with the mic. There we go. Okay. Okay, Zenny, you ready? We're going to do this? Yeah. All right. You can, oh, oh, that's right. We're going to light a candle, sorry. Yeah, okay. Now are you ready? All right. Will you come up here? All right. 
All my classes at Good Life better pay off. <laughs> what is the name of your child? Zenny Arlen Patterson. I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mark you with the sign of the cross that you may know that you are called and claimed by Christ to be a disciple, to live in his love. Shall we go for, shall we introduce you to all these people? Yeah? yeah? Well, you, you, know, you know these two, right? Yeah. Does he look different to you now? He's so handsome. Yes, and baptized. Here's the choir. Yes. And here I might walk a little faster. Just we'll see. Just we'll see how this goes. But you know all, you know, do you know all these people? Yeah, I know, I know you know somebody over there. Shady. Yeah, that's right. And so all these people are here for you. Well, they're here to make the church, to be the church, so that people can learn and understand and know more about what life is like and how to live as a good person and the things that we might do to make the world a better place. And we do that because we know and learn about God's love and care. And all these people, all these big kids and grown-ups and other kids, part of this work. Whew. <laughs> all right. One, one more thing. We're going to put our hands on you and uh, pray a blessing upon you. So, send, O oh God, your Holy Spirit to rest upon your son, Zenny, that he would know of your love and care and compassion, that he would know the sanctity and safety of your love, this day and ever. Amen. Amen. Okay. Now, time for your candle. you. You can return to your seats. And Theo, how are, how's this going to go? He's pretty good. All right. Yeah. Hello. He might want to walk, but. Okay. <laughs> He's good. Yeah. You see all of this up here? And what is the name of your child? Theodore George Laird. Theodore George Laird. I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, amen. I mark you with the sign of the cross to know that you are called and claimed by Christ, our creator, our redeemer, and our care. Do you want to meet the rest of your new family? I mean, I, I, know, I know you know these two. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, this is the choir. They insist on being first. Yes. So. And this is the place where the choir sings songs and we tell stories and we ask questions about how to live and how to be. We wonder about God's love and about Jesus' life and how the Holy Spirit works. We think about big questions and we try to do big things to make the world better, to understand more, to show compassion and care, and to be an example for others to see what God can be like and what God can do and how we might be called to do 
big and little things in our life centered on an understanding that God is one, a God of blessing and of beauty and abundance and fullness, that God would calm our fears, ease our worries, and bring us to a good place. Here are the kids. Someday soon, you might be up here too, sitting and watching somebody else get baptized. And as we come back here, we'll lay our hands upon, upon you and offer a prayer and blessing. Send, O oh God, your Holy Spirit upon Theo, Theodore, that he would know of your love and care through all the days of his life. Give him strength, compassion, and wisdom to grow, and may he know that he will never be alone, that he is held in your grace. Amen. Okay. Guess I'll surrender him back to his parents for Theo, for Zenny, for Mackenzie, for Nicole, for Marilyn and Kevin. Into the household of faith, we welcome you with joy and thanksgiving. We are members of the bodies of Christ. We are inheritors of God's promise. In the name of Christ, we welcome you. So the newest members of Grace United Church, congratulations to, all right. Let's worship, let's quickly exchange blessings with the adults. So let's stand and your loudest voices. May God bless you as you stay to hear God's word. On your mark, get set, go.
This fall, we have been progressing quickly through the narrative arc of the Bible with different characters briefly taking center stage. But the love and care of God's power and promise remain steady throughout. Our reading today focuses on the prophet Nathan, advisor to King David, who receives a vision from God about constructing a royal temple. From the New International Version of the Bible, 2 Samuel chapter 7, verses 1 to 17, let us hear of God's promise made to David's line, through which we trace our own spiritual ancestry. After the king was settled in his palace, and the Lord gave him rest from all his enemies around him, he said to Nathan the prophet, Here I am, living in a house of cedar, while the ark of God remains in a tent. Nathan replied to the king, Whatever you have in mind, go ahead and do it, for the Lord is with you. But that night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan, saying, Go and tell my servant David, this is what the Lord says. Are you the one to build me a house to dwell in? I have not dwelt in a house from the day I brought the Israelites up out of Egypt to this day. I have been moving from place to place with the tent as my dwelling. Wherever I have moved with all the Israelites, did I ever say to any of their rulers whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now then, tell my servant David, this is what the Lord Almighty says. I took you from the pasture, from tending the flock, and appointed you ruler over my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone, and I have cut off all your enemies from before you. Now I will make your name great, like the names of the greatest rulers on earth. And I will provide a place for my people Israel and will plant them so that they can have a home of their own and no longer be disturbed. Wicked people will not oppress them anymore as they did at the beginning and have done ever since the time I appointed leaders over my people Israel. I will also give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord declares to you that the Lord himself will establish a house for you. When your days are over and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring to succeed you, your own flesh and blood, and I will establish his kingdom. He is the one who will build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he will be my son. When he does, when he does wrong, I will punish him with a rod wielded by others, with floggings inflicted by human hands. But my love will never be taken away from him, as I took it away from Saul, whom I removed from before you. Your house and your kingdom will endure forever before me. Your throne will be established forever. Nathan reported to David all the words of, his, of this entire revelation. May we in our faith journeys find places of safety and sanctuary that set the spirit to work among the people. May we rest in the promises of eternal love and care.
Let us pray. Holy God, we give thanks for the gift of new life that infuses us and surrounds us and inspires us. We give thanks for the gift of a growing community that grows in strength, that shares in our lives. This morning we ask that the prayers that we pray, the songs that we sing, the words that we say and hear be blessed by you. O God, our strength, our refuge, and our redeemer. Amen. My partner Shelley and I relocated this spring. I think most of you knew that. And I think about how easily we did so with the degree of guilt and embarrassed privilege. Like almost six months ago, we sold our home in Strathroy within 30 hours of listing and moved into a newly built bungalow that had been sitting empty for months in the burgeoning suburbs of Cam Lackey. Looking back, we discharged these major transactions with ease. Of course, we would argue that the hard work we'd done in all the years prior to maintain and upgrade our previous home, as well as all of the time and effort we'd taken to manage our finances, all paid off with how smoothly things unfolded. We'd been investing and working towards such an eventual move ever since our first, first mortgage payment came out of our account. Still, when I hear story after story about skyrocketing rents, the difficulty of finding affordable housing, I feel a discomforting pang of guilt. And then, when the Sunday Scripture lesson describes a situation about King David living luxuriously in a grand palace while God remains outdoors, I can't help but think of Rainbow Park. God remains with the unhoused and those living rough in these cooling nights, and I cuddle up snug and warm in a house where the greatest worry centers on what our new neighbors might think about our backyard fence. I try to puzzle out what God's postponement of a temple might mean, whether the divine presence prefers to remain unhoused or rejects David's intended glory-grabbing construction project. Now, before going into any, any deeper into discussion, I should present a brief lesson in Judeo-Christian religious relics. The scripture mentions the ark and the tabernacle, the tent. Now, we, we know that there are religious words, but some specifics might help set the context. Now, Indiana Jones maybe made the Ark of the Covenant famous in cinematic glory, rendered as only Hollywood can. And despite the hyperbolic presentation of a supernatural Nazi melting power that references Pandora's box, a grain of truth informs this MacGuffin device. The Ark of the Covenant, as described in the book of Exodus, contains the holiest artifacts of the Hebrew faith, the stone tablets of the Ten Commandments, the rod of Aaron, and a pot of manna. Fashioned from acacia wood and gilded with gold, this chest became the holiest, most sacred object for the ancient Israelites. Sculpted angels sat upon the lid, which served as the mercy seat upon which God sat whenever on earth among the people. The ark contained so much power that anyone unworthy who looked into or even touched it by accident or intent died instantly. Needless to say, the people held the ark in high esteem, most holy, most reverential, most feared, most valued, the symbol and concrete expression of their relationship to the most powerful, most high God. Additionally, the tabernacle, which translates as hut or tent, served as the shelter for the Ark of the Covenant, along with other important artifacts like a menorah, incense, and specially consecrated bread. The tabernacle represented, the tent represented, the mobile and transportable earthly dwelling place of God. But more than any mere tent, the tabernacle adhered to biblical specifications and orderly conduct around and within. This morning, we catch up to King David in a moment of peace and calm, having established Jerusalem as his capital city and bringing the ark from its protected place of hiding with great pomp and circumstance. Taking stock of his achievements and his accomplishments, David names a nagging action item left undone. 
He's attained creaturely comfort for himself in a grand palace of imported cedar, while his God, the source of his strength, the inspiration for his spirit, the focus of his creativity and imagining, remains roughing it in a tent of the tabernacle, still outdoors, still vulnerable to the elements, still unsettled and impermanent. His impulse to construct a temple for his Lord seems like a good idea, a faithful expression of devotion and piety, a proclamation of praise and promise. God denies this request, relayed through David's trusted advisor, Nathan. God does not desire a temple, a house in which the holy presence could hide away from the people. For all the time that passed since the exodus from Egyptian enslavement, over 400 years, God had dwelt among the people, on the move and on the go with them. Never once did God suggest or hint that a house of cedar would be a good idea. Scholars point to this text as a watershed moment in the Old Testament, in the history of the Hebrew people, in the institutionalization of David's family line, and the establishment of Israel as a nation. What happens next lays groundwork for an everlasting legacy, a permanent promise of guaranteed grace, a God-given gift of glory forever. Instead of David building God a literal house, God constructs a metaphorical home for David, a dynasty. A great kingdom forever ruled by one of David's lineage will possess a place of perpetuity planted in permanence, never to be dislodged. Unfortunately, the interpretations and enactments of this promise have fueled colonial practices and attitudes of entitlement. If David's descendants hold God's promise and favor, then any claim that they make to the land carries the weight of this promise made in Scripture. We see such theological and political rationale being used throughout the decades in the conflict between Palestine and Israel. We see such treatment applied by churches and governments claiming manifest destiny and doctrines of discovery in campaigns of conquering and settling otherwise occupied lands. We see God's promise to a chosen people perverted and distorted to restrict residency and movement of indigenous nations to reserves and reservations in North America. Despite the imperfect application of these promises, we still find comfort and consolation in them. No matter how fallen, no matter how far we have fallen or failed, the love of God remains steady and strong. Never would God withdraw or withhold her love or her favor. Not like with King Saul. Like David proved to possess enough faith and belief to last a lifetime of lifetimes, his shepherding instincts bringing us all to pasture. This promise rings of eternal blessing of God's loyalty and love. The kind of love that parents have for their children. Love that forgives so much. Love that puts another's life before your own. Love that endures and perseveres. Our ritual of baptism testifies to that great love of a parent for a child and expands that notion of love and care to include a community. This public declaration of blessing and belonging moves out of individual households into the shared social space of neighbors and friends as well as family. God moves out and among the people, mobilizing and manifesting in the world, not confined or contained in a temple tower or a tabernacle tent. This morning, as we baptize the newest sons of our church family, we welcomed also other new members to our congregation. We continue to construct the spiritual home here that offers growth through change, that shines as an inclusive intergenerational community partner. We will celebrate our new members and the many volunteers and leaders that make this place a home, a place where love lives among the people. And we work at this promise continually because sometimes sometimes it takes a while to feel settled and at home. Six months ago, Shelley and I moved into a new house, and for the longest time, we felt like we were in an Airbnb playing house in somebody else's place. Even though our stuff 
filled the rooms, and even the missing salad spinner eventually, even though it was our stuff, we still felt displaced inside our domicile. Not until we established our new routines and figured out our, how our life would unfold, um, discovering, the, we, discovering the elements of home that resided in community among people, did I finally feel settled and moved in. I'm still on the lookout for a tailor that can hem my pants, and I've resigned myself to the fact that I won't find a pierogi provider or a macaron maker like I used to have, but I have found my barber and my coffee roaster and my chiropractor and my massage therapist and my fitness classes. These are my people. And, and you, you, my church, my people, my home, it was as easy as that. So welcome here. Welcome home. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy God of eternal promise and love, wherever we have been, you were with us, architect of the universe. Wherever we are, you are constantly at our side, shelter of our hearts. Wherever we are going, you are already waiting for us, builder of our future. Above the din of violence and war, you whisper to us of reconciliation, Prince of Peace. Into lives which are barren and filled with the ashes of disappointment, you come singing of newness, hope of heaven. Where the oppressed are captive to our greed and the poor have nothing to eat, you have come to set all of us free and to feed everyone at your table, servant of the lost. When we are afraid of tomorrow, push us into your presence, spirit with us. When we believe no one loves us, sing your blessing to our souls. And when we doubt our ability to be your children of God, infuse us with your gifts. Be with us as we make our prayers for the people who are near and dear to us. We pray for Betty, for Lori. We pray for Mickey, Sally, and family. We pray for Dave. Hear also, O oh God, the prayers of our hearts that we give in this time of silence. God in community, holy in one, remind us that there is nothing you cannot do. As we pray, as Jesus taught us to say to you, our protector and our parent, our mother and our father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
worship today, we have welcomed and affirmed that we are blessed by the presence of God. While at home, may God soothe us with blessings of forgiveness for ourselves and each other. While at work, may God strengthen us <clears throat> with the blessings of gifts to fulfill our purpose. In the world, may God nourish us with the abundant and diverse blessings of creation. In times of quiet, may God comfort us with the blessings of peace. Each and every day, may we affirm that we are sustained by the loving presence of God. Let us go in peace and let us go in love. Amen. Amen.